Hi, this is Allison with Saratech, and today we're going to be talking about creating fluid regions in CMAP. So first of all, my model set up here, I have two boxes, uh, they're just plate elements, um, and I want to fill each with a fluid region. So I'm going to go up to connect, fluid region, and I'll give this a descriptive title. Uh, let's say I want this to be the fluid in container A. So we have a few options here. The first one is the coordinate system that we want to define our region in. Uh, and this does need to be a rectangular coordinate system. I do recommend creating a new coordinate system for each of your fluid regions in case they need to be changed later. Uh, because the z-axis of this coordinate system is going to represent the free surface of the fluid. Um, so for this case, I'm going to select container A, because that's the coordinate system that I want to use. The next option here, we have a checkbox for z-free surface and then a value we can enter. So this z-free surface defines where the free surface of the fluid is in relation to the coordinate system that we've selected. So I'll drag this off to the side here. So if this is container A, then you can see I have coordinate system 3 down in this corner here. So if I define the z-free surface at 0, then I'm not going to fill in any of this container at all, because the surface of the fluid is going to be at the bottom of the container. So there's effectively no fluid in that container. So if I wanted to fill it up, say, halfway, uh, this container is one unit tall, one unit wide. It's basically a one unit cube. So I'm going to put in 0.5 there. Uh, my fluid density, I'm just going to put in, uh, just going to put in one. And these two planes are planes of symmetry. Uh, for this case, let's say this is a model of half of a container. You can see I only have, uh, I have two open walls here, so it's going to be half a container. So I want there to be a plane of symmetry in the XZ plane. So I'm going to select symmetry there. And finally, I have the option to select either surfaces or elements to define my fluid region. For this case, I'm going to select surfaces. And I can select my surfaces. Now, the important thing to note is this positive side checkbox. And that's going to determine which side of the elements gets selected. So you want to make sure your surface normals point in a direction that makes sense. So I'm going to select these surfaces and click OK. And those elements are all going to turn orange to let me know that that's where my fluid region is. You can also see this small little fluid region symbol right there. For my other fluid region, I'm going to use a lot of the same options. I'm going to call this container B. For this one, I want to use coordinate system 4 for container B. And let me turn off the connection region that I just created so we can see this a little bit better. So coordinate system 4 is right here. It's about halfway up the container. So for this case, if I set Z free surface to 0, then my free surface is going to be on the XY plane, and it'll fill this container about halfway up. If I set it to 0.5, like I did for container A, then now it's going to be 0.5 above the XY plane, so it's going to be all the way full on the container. So for container B, I want it to be filled the same amount as container A, so I'm going to put in 0 there. If I were to uncheck the Z free surface box, then FEMAP would treat this as an external surface. So like if I were to immerse this box in water, you know, it's just in sitting in a fluid. Um, it's not necessarily contained by anything. But anyway, I'm going to set that Z free surface to 0. Fluid density, I'm just going to use 1 again. And the XZ plane, again, is my plane of symmetry. And this time, I'm going to select elements. And you'll notice I can select an element 
and a face. So for elements like beams that don't have faces, you won't be able to select those. And those shouldn't make a huge difference in your analysis anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and select a couple faces there. If I want to speed this up, I can click this button here, which brings up the element selection dialog. Um, and I'm going to go on surface. I can just select those elements pretty easily. Um, and now I can get to selecting my element faces. So now I've selected this face of all of these elements. And you can see that this lets me specify which faces of the elements I want to select. And I can use this highlight button to see which ones I have selected. So I'm going to click more and start adding the rest of my element faces here. More again. And there we go. I've selected all the element faces in container B. So I'll click OK. You can see I have a list here. And I'll click OK. And again, this turns orange so that I know my fluid region is here. So one thing to note about these fluid regions is that they represent a mass matrix. They don't represent an actual fluid. So if you're looking for uh, CFD analysis or you want to know about sloshing in, say, a, a, a fuel container, uh, these are not the elements that you would want to use. These represent the mass of a fluid in a container, and that's it. So that's one important thing to note about this. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video about creating fluid regions in DMAP. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.